You know, Vishnu, I want to start with the Fed against the backdrop of so many other countries, but especially the emerging markets, because, you know, people have been warning at the IMF, the World Bank, for a long time. Whatever signals the Fed sends, and this is going to be a very big meeting because the boost in inflation creating some expectation they might signal a sooner, at least, consideration of reducing stimulus. If they do, what is that going to mean for these other uh, central banks around the world? The, the, the really short answer is a lot. Uh, but exactly what would, would then boil down to two things. I think markets are watching for uh, two things in particular. One is whether there are any incremental shifts in the so-called dot plot. Uh, because we do recall the last dot plot was very reassuring in that uh, the Fed was going to hold rates through 2023. Uh, so whether there's any shift in that may bring through uh, some, some you know, cognizance about uh, or, or some idea and clarity on, on what to expect. Uh, the other point is really markets are worried about taper first because I think everyone has made it uh, patently clear that it'll be well before any adjustments to rate that taper will come through. Uh, and so whether the how and whether the Fed transitions to talking about talking about taper comes through uh, is going to be the big thing markets watch for. All, uh, uh, but having said that, I, I think their starting point is it's too early. The Fed will not mention it. And at this point, they're still quite happy to look through the rise in, in, in inflation, uh, passing it off as uh, you know, predominantly transitory. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know if I'd put 100 percent bet on that. But you have a very interesting analysis of how the Bank of Japan has to deal with the transitions that the other two big three central banks make, how slowly they go, how quickly they go. So how do you, how do you chart that course for the BOJ? I, I, I think that the irony here is that despite being cutting edge, uh, in, in, in its policy, the BOJ, you know, moving into things like purchasing ETFs before the others, uh, so on and so forth, you know, YCC, you name it, they've done it first. But despite all of this, uh, they're still hamstrung by what the Fed does. So if the Fed is seen uh, to be more dovish uh, than, the EC, uh, than the BOJ, then immediately uh, you get the, the frustration of a stronger yen that uh, the BOJ has to deal with, even as the struggle to bring inflation back into uh, the, the foreground. So this is why the BOJ will have to go out of their way beyond the uh, you know, tangible actions. The biggest thing they have to do is to come across to markets and say, look, we're, we're still going to be far more dovish than the Fed, uh, and, and we've got the chops to prove it. Uh, and I think each and every meeting from here uh, is going to be a measurement of how much more dovish uh, the BOJ is than the Fed. And, and why it matters a lot more this time is because the Fed is operating from a different paradigm, a, a flexible average inflation targeting, which all of us are trying to figure out what it means in terms of parameters. Uh, and that's the BOJ's uh, big uh, challenge. The ECB has already done its part by, you know, despite lifting their forecast saying that, hang on, we, we're still not where the US is. So, uh, you know, very gently they've slipped that pass through the markets that we, we're going to lag the Fed in terms of normalization. Uh, and now the ball is on the BOJ's, BOJ's court. Vish, we've got May activity data out of China this week as well. We're going to continue to see the distortion from base effects. But when it comes to the, the factory gate inflation that we continue to see, should the PBOC be doing more than just the jawboning that we hear from authorities? And when are we going to start seeing the pass through globally? I, I think that's really something that, uh, you know, everyone is watching and not just the PBOC. Uh, it is of, of uh, some concern that the factory of the world is seeing, um, you know, record high in inflation. Um, and, and that's where the worry is. Where the silver lining is, is that so far the evidence suggests that the pass-through between raw factory gate inflation, and, and that's particularly to do with the upstream uh, inflationary pressures, down to the manufacturing component of it is already subdued on the, on the first pass. Beyond that, uh, we know that going through to CPI is subdued even further. And historically, we can see that incrementally, the pass-through from manufacturing inflation in China, the, the cost side of it, to global inflation has diminished even more. And this has partly got to do with you know, China's productivity gains and profit margins allowing for some absorption. So this is where we can take some comfort, uh, but no complacency, unfortunately.